877 NFL kick. Let's go to Matt. He's calling us from Michigan. He's got the Eagles on his mind. What's up today, Matt? What's happening, gentlemen? Uh, Jim, I don't know if you remember, I called. Back to the main point is the Eagles, man. I know uh, my buddy lived in, in South Jersey, and my nephew, and his one of his best friends lived in the same circle with Carson Wentz. And his wife, the wives talked, and uh, the, I wish Carson Wentz all the luck in Indianapolis. You know, I hope they go 6 and 11. But the best, uh, the, the problem with Wentz was, you know, unfortunately, with all these injuries, is, you know, he, he was kind of uh, taking a lot of pain medication. And I don't know if that, that affected him or not, but watching these Eagles games. You know, you got the blitz coming from the left side. Where do you throw? You throw to the left side. Wentz was holding the ball. I know we had 15 different lineups, and we had no, no really good receivers. Uh, Deshaun couldn't stay healthy, but, you know, he, he was just he holding. Okay. But just yeah, like that description, why, if the Eagles knew everything you know, why wouldn't they keep him and say, we got a big contract on the guy, he's playing hurt, he doesn't have weapons, Get him to get him to 2021, and then decide. Why, why would you dump him if you knew all the stuff you just said to be true? Why would you ever move him? Well, here's why: because some people, like the, like like you were just talking about, love these younger kids today. They all put themselves. They're all on a high pedestal. They're all very sensitive. You can't say anything to them. They know better than everybody. They are the ones that are the cause of this issue. This is what happened with Wentz. We wanted to give Hurts a little shot in there because Wentz was stinking up the joint, and he, like a like a spoiled brat, couldn't handle it. And then he started turning the locker room. And this is what I think happened. And you know, I I loved Wentz. I was a big backer of Wentz, but. You know, I'm, I'm all for Jalen Hurts now. I know uh, he's going to be the Donovan McNabb of 2000. You know, he's going to he's gonna run when he has to run. And, you know, our offensive well, line is coming back. If it's a fair him. fight, if it's a fair fight, do you think he can beat out Flacco? Yeah, I think he can. I think, it's, I think Flacco's there to help, you know, and I think that Flacco's over his neck injury. And, you know, here's another Philly, Philly, product pretty much and he's uh flacco's there to help and he's a good guy and uh no flacco you know, I, I interviewed flacco he's going in there to start he, he said that to us he said i will not go to a team if i can't start yeah he didn't say it because he he wants everyone to think he's still competitive he doesn't believe he's going to be the backup there yeah, he, he's upset that they drafted a, a guy who was going to supplant him in Baltimore, and he had to go out there and deal with it in Denver. He said that he's done with that. He's done with that. Well, he's I, there so. that I, I think I think what's going to help out is he's going to help out the team in the sense that now these defenses are going to have to prepare for the man in the pocket and the man who can run from the pocket. So I think you're going to have, it's going to cause a lot of problems for defending defenses. And Flacco's a solid guy. I like him. Yeah, some it works. If a hurt starts to, you know, falter or he doesn't get the, the top stop, I'm not worried about it. I think Flacco, he's got a Super Bowl ring, and I'm not uh, well, I'm not worried about him. we got Sanders back now, like this, this Galway guy from Memphis State. I mean, I, you saw some of the highlights on him. He, he took that Micah Parsons and set him on his tail. Uh, you know, well, when they played Penn State. But. Well, we, we got, we've held you long enough, Matt. I'm glad you can finally cheer about your Indiana Hoosiers. You have been on, on the uptick. And the, that was a big victory last year. So uh, I appreciate you reminding me. Yeah, I'll remind you again this year. <laughs> okay, Matt. appreciate Appreciate the call. You just made the list, Matt. He's on the Freak Off Friday car list. But the Richmond Spider. He yeah. fell in love with a team after he got home. Um, so Jalen Hurts is one in three as a starter. Uh -huh. but if you listen to an Eagle fan, you think you're talking about uh, this guy's one an all pro. Yeah, he's going to Canton already. Uh, that's what it sounds like to me. I don't get it because he may lose the job right out of training camp. It may be so evident on the field that they have no choice but to go to Flacco. Now, if all things are equal, then you give it to the younger player, in my opinion. And Jalen and uh, hurts and what uh, he could do, but 
I, I don't know if that's going to be the case. And the coach came out and already said it is an open competition. So I'm going to hold the coach to his word in Nick Sirianni. It looks like a setup that Jalen Hurts is going to be given every opportunity uh, to get the job. But if I'm Joe Flacco, I'm going in there and I'm taking it. I'm telling you right now, and I will remove all doubt about that if I'm Flacco. He's he not going to get the chance you think he's going to get. Mm, I hope so. Yeah. We'll see. I, I hope so, too. I think if you want to win games, you give it to the best guy. Uh, but I think this is hurts his team, and when he stum if he stumbles, I'm not going to be on him. But you know, I, I here's the amazing thing: the guy has never thrown for sixty percent completion in, in his four starts. Never. His sack ratio is one every twelve pass plays for as athletic as he is. He's thrown a total of five touchdowns uh, in four games. That's not going to get it done. Well, I hope they're not blaming everyone but him. Hey, look, I like Jalen, but you just gave away the guy you thought was a franchise quarterback in order to give this guy first dibs on the job. We'll see what happens. Very interesting.